Um, you know, the image always looks more well lit before I press video, so this is not sufficiently well lit. Okay, well, let's do the, um, what do you call it? Blair Witch Project thing. No, I don't want to do that. Um, so here's the thing. Um, yesterday afternoon, I was chatting with someone who watches some of these videos. He was saying really smart, nice stuff, and also sharing some insecurities and some problems. And I, he was about exactly 20 years younger than me, and I wanted to offer some encouragement. But that kind of socializing kind of takes a lot out of me. And I was already having a terrible, terrible pain in my shoulder. So, um, I borrowed, um, I was planning to just, um, ask for, like, a shot of gin from the guy who owns half the house that I was supposed to own the other half of, which he is polite enough to remind me sometimes that he owns this house and I better do what he says, which is, um, you know, like, to say that, like, seven months after your husband died and didn't leave you the half of the house you didn't ask for, but he misled you into expecting, so you dropped your entrepreneurial projects, which I clearly do have that impulse now, right? Anyway, that was rude. That's not the first time he's been rude, but we get along. If I make him laugh, we get along. There seems to be a lot of that going around. Anyway, um, I went to his area, um to bum, uh, like, a shot or two of gin because my shoulder was hurting a lot. And I knew I should discipline myself to drink some Kratom, even though that stuff tastes terrible. And it's possibly not very good for you. Yeah, I'm just going to look kind of ugly in this video. That's fine. There's this glamour filter that adds light and reduces ugly. Who can use that? It's not that inaccurate. Anyway, um... He ended up saying, oh, I don't have anything except there's this large bottle of brandy that I'm going to throw away because it's got some cork in it. And I'm apparently subtext. He's the kind of rich person. He essentially <laughs> revealed he is, I'm the kind of rich person who throws away a large bottle of brandy. If there's some cork in it. So I was in a lot of pain. And like I said, I was a little amped from too much networking. It's, you know, it's a fine line when you're talking to people of the opposite gender in a heterosexual context and you're trying to be supportive and encourage, you know, them to pay attention to what you do because you think it's worthwhile. And then what's the line between that and flirting? And how do you make that clear? I felt like this guy really had his head on his shoulders. So I trusted him, which meant I walked, I, I kind of tapped dance right on that line, which means that some part of my psyche was going, Hmm, are you losing your grip? Because you're tap dancing on the line, and that's not something you're inclined to do. Because, you know, whatever, you know, it's just not a good idea. Um, so I made, like, six videos, apparently under the influence of Brandy, with some crazy titles. Like, crazy titles. Very much expressing my ambivalence about whether or not I feel okay knowing that the only videos that I post that get triple digit uh, responses, view rates, are, are in some way making fun of the fact that um, you, people seem to want, want to most want to watch the videos that are talk about something naughty or dirty or sexy, or pretend to, playfully, as a joke. I have, it looks like I made about six videos, I just changed four of them to unlisted, including one that got 86 views, because I'm not... <laughs> And I think maybe one that got 127 views I also changed to Unlisted, because this is not a porn channel. This is a candor channel. And I'm a little annoyed that um, one of my subscribers, who is a close personal friend, and more, uh, you know, I've been asking him, could you just pay attention to the substantive part and say something, you know, like articulate or insightful or erudite or something like that? And I to, like try and send him one that's articulate and insightful and erudite so he doesn't have to, you know, lie. And also, I sometimes like videos by a YouTuber who um, I'm supporting. Uh, I don't mean financially, some some I do. But if I'm supporting them with my attention and, and my interact, you know, interaction rate, I sometimes like a video even if it didn't really tickle my funny bone or, or do that much for me because I'm supporting that um, YouTuber and I like their content. And I kind of think that somebody as close to me as the person I requested this favor from could do that. You know, he could just kind of listen to something and go, 
let's see, Jude wants me to say, like, articulate or insightful or, you know, um, educational or informative. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, I'm a little distracted, but yeah, I, I can see that. And, you know, it'll probably, if, if I encourage that, there'll probably be more of that as opposed to, you know, joining in with encouraging the super personal, including kind of naughty. So instead he said something about candor, and that's fine. But um, I really need some encouragement for the substance, because for me, being candid is going to mean sometimes talking about ideas and art and psychology and literature and philosophy. Okay, the lighting is just, oh, hey, that's a whole other thing. Okay, I can't really maintain this very long with my still hurting a lot shoulder. Some bad stuff happened yesterday evening. Somebody was very rude to me. She stood, she agreed to, she offered to drive me somewhere I needed to go. She stood me up. She said, yeah, well, you should, after the fact, she said, yeah, just call Twitter. And I'm like, excuse me, Uber. And I'm like, do you think I would have offered you $50 for two rides if I had Uber on my phone? What world are you in? I mean, I tried to politely point, point out that that didn't make any sense. And she responded to that by insult. You know, it's, it's possible that I've been hearing men complain that women know how to push their buttons, and apparently I know how to do that, but I don't try to. But it's possible, you know, women have greater um, verbal acuity than men, and it's possible that women just unwittingly, instinctively know how to do that. Oh, here's a cute example of verbal acuity. Uh, earlier tonight, I was thinking, I the phrase, well, he's in no position to judge, went through my mind about somebody who I'm actually quite friendly with, and I think pretty highly of. I'm pretty sure he's a subscriber. Um, and then I thought, well, wh what do you mean he's in no position to judge? As far as you know, he lives a pretty ethical life. You don't, you haven't, you haven't learned anything about him that's unethical. W what are you talking about? And I was like, yeah, that didn't make any sense. What, what do I mean? And I said, he's of, and I, so I corrected it in my mind, and I, I said, he's of no inclination to judge. Because he's not judgmental, and he likes me, and he's very supportive. So um, I'm not going to name any names, but I think you know who you are. Um, your first name is lower down in the alphabet than most of the other letters. There. That's a kind of a shout out. Um, so yeah, to change the common phrase, in no position to judge, to a less common phrase, of no inclination to judge. In fact, that's like coining a phrase. I've never heard anybody say that. It's not only uncommon, it's new. So that's just an example of the kind of thing women are because of our, the way our brains are made, um, somewhat different, uh, better at than men, you know, except that there are some really genius wordsmith men out there and genius wordsmith women. I like to call my boyfriend a, a gem setter of words because he's more than just a wordsmith. I was telling the guy who finally did drive me to the chiropractor that I think it was him. Oh, God, I can't even keep track. Too much networking, too much networking, too much networking. I was telling someone that um, when my boyfriend was only 19, he wrote this fiction that he read to me one morning at 9 a.m., which used to be really early for me. And it was so good. It was like William Faulkner, who most of you will know, is a Southern Amer Southern writer from the United States. I don't really like saying America when I'm referring to the United States for obvious reasons. Um, uh, he was like, well, the, the fiction he wrote at 19 was like William Faulkner, which is very dense, cerebral, complicated, intensely verbal fiction meets um, the Italian writer I rather admire, Mark Bovasi, who wrote um, a book called Carcass of Dreams. Oh my god, I'm, my phone's going to be so screwed up because I made this video, but I like it. Um, okay, bye. You're going to see me turning off the button because I can't. I'm just not in a position to be sly right now. Bye. Bye. Oh, that's so dark. I wanted to end this on a happy note. Maybe I'll have to try to have some dexterity. Hmm, that's kind of dark, too. Oopsie. Calendar channel. I'm learning as I go. Bye.